Good morning. As we prepare for Mass, please join me in praying for good vocations from our parish. The prayer is found in the front inside cover of your blue hymnal. Together we pray. Lord, Lord you, told you told us that the harvest, that the harvest indeed, is indeed is great, but the laborers, the laborers are, few. are few. Pray therefore, pray therefore the Lord of the, Lord harvest, of the harvest, harvest, to send laborers, laborers into his fields. His field. We ask we you to strengthen, strengthen us as we follow, as we follow the, vocation the vocation to which you have called us. We pray particularly pray for those called to serve as priests, deacons, and religious sisters, and religious sisters or brothers. brothers. May we May be we open, open and responsive to the, to the call, call of serving, serving your, holy, your people. holy people. We ask we this ask through this Christ, through our, Christ Lord. our Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist on the fourth Sunday of Easter. If you have a cell phone with you today, please silence it now or turn it off, as we do not want to disturb the sacredness of the liturgy. Now, in the spirit of Christian welcome, let's stand and take a moment to say hello to those around us. Our celebrant today is Father Rick Jones, our pastor. And as we begin this celebration, let's pray together by singing number 853, All People That on Earth Do Dwell. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of the risen Lord Jesus be always with you. And with your spirit. Happy Easter to all of you. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. So we come together and we celebrate these two really uh, wonderful occasions to see how we are in love basically how we're in love with our God and how we are in love with our mothers, how they do so much in their generosity to reach out and to be present to us and to show us how unconditional love is to be seen in our world. So as we gather ourselves, let's mind, be mindful of that unconditional love that comes from God and uh, let's ask the Lord to help us to be good and faithful Christians. Lord Jesus, you come to us and you show us your love and you ask us to live the good news of the gospel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, when we have gone our own way, when we have not listened to your gospel, when we have not followed your way of love, we ask for your forgiveness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, send us, send us as your disciples into the world 
to share your love with all those in need. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share of the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. For he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch and Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. 
On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowd, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from the territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, sing sheep of his flock. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. We are his people, the sheep A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, 
These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Well, good morning to all of you. It's good that we come together and we celebrate not only uh, this uh, fourth Sunday of Easter, but we also celebrate Mother's Day. And um, whether we uh, know it or not, it's, a, it's another celebration that we have in the church, and it's called uh, World Day of Prayer for Vocations. And it always follows, it always uh, falls during the, during the Easter season on this fourth Sunday of uh, Easter. Because the Sunday is traditionally called uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. We hear that in the Gospel today about how Jesus is talking about his sheep, how they hear his voice, how they follow him. And so it's an opportunity to see how Jesus is our Good Shepherd. He's the one we follow. He's the one who calls us. He's the one who is there to love us. So the church, and I was doing a little history on this, I was kind of looking up some information on it, about how long we've been celebrating this, <laughs> this, uh, this day of world, day of prayer for vocations. And so it said in, uh, on the bishop's website, you can take a look at it, it gives a lot of information. 
but it says we've been celebrating this for 59 years. I said, man, that's a long time. All at once pops into my mind that uh, at the end of this month, I, I celebrate my 59th birthday. And I was like, well, it's not that long that we've been celebrating this. So at first I was like, man, we've been celebrating for all these years, you know, golly, jeepers, something that's ancient of days. And then I was like, oh, it's brand new, you know. So the prayers for vocations that we pray for today are for all those that we think of with regard to the religious life. We think of those that have dedicated themselves to the permanent diaconate, like our own uh, Deacon Rob and Deacon Mark and Deacon Tom and all the other uh, permanent deacons that we may be familiar with. We celebrate um, vocations to the priesthood. We celebrate vocations to the consecrated religious life. We think of um, uh, David Kiblinger, David Kiblinger, the, the son of uh, Mark and Debbie. He's going to be ordained a priest in just a few weeks. But we see about how he is, before being a priest, he's also a member of the Society of Jesus. So he's one of these consecrated religious. He's a Jesuit. And so we, we think of um, David in a special way, all those who are consecrated religious. But we also think of all the other many vocations that we have that we're familiar with. A vocation given to each of us by God. And so I want a lot of you who are married, I want you to think about the sacrament of holy matrimony that you are involved in. About how you are blessed. How you are a part of this, this holy bond, this vocation given to you and how you are celebrating that sacrament of holy matrimony. I want you to think also of, of lay consecrated individuals. These are individuals who don't necessarily join a religious community or anything like this, but they still make a commitment to, to living in a kind of a religious way. They, they make a commitment to saying, I'm going to kind of focus my life around the church. I'm going to maybe be of even service in the church, maybe a minister in the church. And then also we think of those who are uh, in the single life. We want to we wanna keep them in our prayers as well because they too are able to see and to recognize the love of God that's made real in their lives. And probably in a very special way are able to dedicate themselves to the honor and the glory of God. You know, we've heard of all these vocations and how there's beauty within each one of those. And the reason why there's beauty within each one of those is because it's, it's a call from God. And anytime there's a call from God, there is something that's beautiful. But today, in a particular way, we're called to pray and intercede for all of these vocations. Because, you know, our world is a tough place where we live. And so we need to make sure that we pray and we intercede for good religious vocations, all those vocations that have a call from, from God, because they're an important part of our life, because we see about how it's a part of Jesus' ongoing mission of bring, bringing salvation to souls and also to ministry within the church. Just in a particular way with regard to religious vocations that deal with married, um, consecrated religious, and the permanent diaconate, around this vast world, the number of priestly vocations has, believe it or not, been steadily on the rise. There's been this increasing number throughout the whole world with regard to the number of, of priestly vocations. <clears throat> in our part of the world, uh, specifically the Western culture and in the United States, the trend for priestly vocations continues to slowly lag behind that, that uh, increase throughout the whole world. That's the reason why we're seeing a lot of, a lot of our priests who are coming to us, like Father Alexander, 
He's coming to us from, it's a western part of the world, but there's still a few more vocations that are going on there. Father Paco, the very same way. And then we think of um, our brothers and sisters over in Africa and in other parts of Asia, how there's uh, a growing number of priestly vocations. So we need to do our part in the United States to make sure that we also pray for, for good vocations, to make sure that God gives us the priests that we need, not just from foreign missions, but also from our own uh, homegrown uh, lands. Now, the number of female religious orders have been steadily declining for the past 40 years, but there are some specific communities, some specific religious communities that are steadily progressing, that are kind of going outside the, the norm with regard to um, what we would see throughout the rest of the world. And in fact, later on, you'll probably be hearing more about this, but um, uh, to those, those religious communities, we're going to be having a, it's called a nun run. And so we're going we're gonna to rent a bus. And I think it's later on in July. I think it's later on towards the end of July. And we're going to see if there's any young women that want to go on this, this little trip to, up to St. Louis to visit maybe about four or five of these religious communities that are really kind of prospering and to see about how maybe there could be an interest in their life to maybe, um, maybe pursue that and just to show the option. Because you know, here in Cape Girardeau, there are no more religious sisters. Here in Cape Girardeau, there are no more religious sisters. So the last religious sisters we had were the ones that were out at St. Francis Hospital, but you know, they've, they left a few years ago. The closest religious sisters are down in, um, I think, uh, Crothersville and over in uh, Popper Bluff. So those, those are the closest religious sisters that we have. So we need to do our part to, once again, praying also for these, um, these female religious communities. And uh, also to see about how we can pray for um, their male counterparts, the religious orders that live in monasteries, that live like David Kiblinger, who's a Jesuit, lives in a community. We need to see what we can do for our part to support those vocations as well. As laity, you need priests and you need consecrated religious to uh, be at service here in the parish, to be in the school. You know, I think of not too long ago, we had uh, religious sisters that were both a part of our St. Vincent School and also I know I, whenever I was going to Notre Dame, we had some go good uh, school sisters of Notre Dame who were over there. And so um, they're, you know, that's, that's not happening anymore either. But we need, we, need those, we need those religious, those good examples to be able to be in our schools, to visit the sick, to offer us the consecration of the Holy Eucharist, to offer us forgiveness of our sins. We just, we just need them. As our gospel says today, all are the sheep of the Lord and ought to hear the voice of God's, God's good shepherd, God's good shepherd and God's voice, and to follow in that vocation that each of us are called. And each of us are called to be a vocation. And each of those vocations, basically, if you want to boil it down, is to love. Each one of those vocations is all about loving. You as a married couple, what are you called to do? You're called to love. What am I called to do as a priest? Hopefully, and on my good days, I'm, I'm a loving example of the Good Shepherd. What do, we, what do we do with those that are in religious communities? They're called to share God's love. So all of us, when you boil down our vocations, it's all about loving. And all of us are called to love and be married. But to which marriage are you called to embrace on earth? The marriage of a man and woman proclaiming to be totally commitment, committed to one another, fruitful with one another, faithful with one another, living forever? 
Or maybe you're called to the marriage of the church in which you are called to a dynamic life-giving love with the Blessed Trinity, with Holy Mother Church. So that's another type of marriage. That's another type of marriage that, for example, I've entered into, Father Alex has entered into, all those good religious sisters and religious brothers that they've entered into. Both are needed. Both of these marriages are needed because if you think that the religious life and priestly vocations are the only ones in jeopardy, then you're wrong. Because you know in our world about how the jeopardy of sacred marriage is being, being, uh, being fought against in a powerful way. So we need to um, make sure that we pray for both of these marriages. And on this Mother's Day, I think it's good to remind ourselves of where good vocations come from. They come from the family. They come from your family. They come from your home. You know, I've done my part in promote, promoting vocations. We had a great evening last Sunday. It's called Project Andrew. And we had probably about, uh, probably about maybe 12 young men come together for this Project Andrew. Our bishop was here, and we had some of the priests in our area. And we just talked about, you know, priesthood, the joys and the challenges of it, and just kind of opened up the doors for them to maybe think about it in their own life. But more than that, you know, I need you moms to do your part on this Mother's Day. Dads, I need you. I need your help in promoting good vocations. You know, we cannot be satisfied with our past accomplishments of vocations that we have produced here in the parish. You know, this parish has done a wonderful job, but it's been a number of years since we've had um, some priestly vocations come from it. The last one was Father Joe Stoverink just about, um, probably about six or seven years ago. And then, of course, uh, David Kibliger, who's going to be uh, ordained. So we need to continue on. We, need, we cannot rest on the satisfaction of our past uh, accomplishments. So as I've said before, my goal is that we try to have at least five religious vocations from our parish. And I'm a little selfish on my own part. I'd say I want five young men for the diocesan priesthood. That's my selfish part. But you know, I'll take whatever. I'll take whatever God gives. If God gives me five young ladies that are ready to give their lives in service at a convent, I'll take them. That's great. And I'll, I'll do 110% in supporting them in their vocation, whatever it might be. So let us pray today. Let's pray for all those who are in discernment. Let's pray for all those who maybe have that small, small, itsy-bitsy question in their life. Can I be, could I be, can I be a religious sister? Could I do that? Could I, could I actually become a priest? Could I do that? Let's pray that at our parish here at St. Vincent's that we will foster and that we will bring to birth good vocations that God can use as priests, religious sisters, religious brothers, good permanent deacons, because these vocations are here. So let us grow them. Let us see how we can go into that garden of all the vocations, and let's see how we can grow good vocations. The Lord Jesus is calling. Let us listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd.
let us proclaim what it is that we believe in. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. Trusting in the promises of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, we place our prayers before our loving God. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may they care for their flocks wisely, following the example of the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government authorities, may they prepare policies which bring forth peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all mothers and those who serve in the role of mother, may they know the special love of Christ, the Virgin Mary's child. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For mothers who have lost a child, that Mary, who stood by the cross of her son, be their consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For members of the Diocese of Springfield, Cape Girardeau, may God strengthen our faith and grant us the spirit of Christian stewardship during the Diocesan Development Fund appeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they join the angels and saints in heaven and enjoy eternal rest from their labors. We pray for Jerry Grimm, brother-in-law of D.D. Siebert and Jim Maurer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For John Montgomery, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Loving and faithful God, you sent your Son as the shepherd of the new covenant. Hear the voice of your flock and respond as you will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for your generosity to the church, your gifts of treasure, and also your gifts of time and talent. If you do have your DDF pledge card and you'd like to turn it in, feel free just to drop it into the collection basket that's going around at this time. So once again, thank you for your generosity. May God bless you for all of your many sacrifices.
like rain that sleeps unseen. Love is come again like wheat a rising green. For the Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Your heart the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but especially in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, with all the bishops, the priests, the deacons, the religious, and your entire people as we walk your ways with faith and hope we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world remember lord our brothers and sisters whom you have fallen asleep in the peace of your christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, with all of our patron saints, especially Saint Vincent, and with all the saints we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As brothers and sisters of Jesus, we hear the call of the Good Shepherd and we pray as he has taught us. Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but see rather the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter in the Lord. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Let us pray. <clears throat> Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you for your uh, prayerfulness today and coming together. Just a couple of announcements. If you're uh, new here to St. Vincent de Paul, uh, you're invited to a new parishioner reception on uh, Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. in the rectory. So I think a lot of you have gotten uh, invitations to that. But if you are new and for some reason uh, you didn't get an invitation, you're more than welcome to come over to the rectory on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. and we'll have a new parishioner reception for you over there. Young adults 18 to 40 are invited to Tuesday Night Thrive. This event is held weekly at 7 p.m. in the Old Convent. And then Catholic Man Night will take place this Wednesday at 6.30 in Dexter at Sacred Heart Parish. All men of the parish are invited to this evening of adoration, confession, and a, uh, and a manly meal. That's a part of it also. So 6.30 down in Dexter at Sacred Heart Parish. And if you've not made your DDF pledge, we encourage you to do so. Pledge cards are available in the pews and also at the parish office and you may drop them in the collection basket next Sunday, or you can bring them by the uh, parish office. So once again, thank you for your support uh, to the bishop and the Diocesan Development Fund. And I think there's a breakfast over at uh, Council 1111 uh, this morning, and this is in honor of mothers. So if you don't have uh, breakfast plans, you might think about going over to Council uh, Knights of Columbus Council 1111 over on the river. I think it's on Spanish Street, so you're uh, welcome to be a part of that. And those of you who are moms, let's, uh, let's 
Let's hunker up close to them. Put your hand on their shoulder or something and offer a blessing to them, okay? Give them maybe a hug is also. And so we'll, if we see somebody who looks like a motherly figure, let's offer out our hands to them and blessing as well. Loving God as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless all of these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. And let the example of their faith and love shine forth for all the world to see. And grant that we, their sons and daughters and friends, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.